Alright guys, here we are. We have power, we have internet, we have water. This is the Talking Dubs podcast. Oh, uh, Mr. Riley. Yeah. We also have ferns. Oh, we also have ferns. Mr. Arthur, those ferns are so big that they are actually outside, and that is just what is trailing into the ag department. We can thank Donnie Moon for these ferns. I think Mr. Donnie undersold them. Like, I, yeah. I heard that they were good ferns, but my goodness, they take up about three elephant sizes of a room. Yeah. I think baby elephants would look up to that. You know what I'm saying? Like, They're huge. They are huge. They are bigger than your office chair. Yeah. Kind of reminds me of a land before time. You remember those? Oh my gosh, Mr. Arthur. You're speaking my language. I <laughs> love land before time. Um, I, you know, I watched like one and two when I was younger. And then yeah. later, you know, like little cousins kind of stuff. I saw that they were like on 12 and stuff. Yeah. I was like, yeah. y'all wouldn't understand. I was there with Land Before Time one and two. <laughs> I said, shut up, Ryan. Um, Mr. Arthur, I yeah. have a couple of things I want to say about uh, that last week uh, hey. with what they said in their things. Um, <clears throat> apparently, I talked about the weekend performing at the Super Bowl. Um, and the Super Bowl seems like it was eight years ago. Um, yeah, it's been a while. To be fair, there was one eight years ago. Anyway, um apparently i apologized to my son and he asked uh for dino nugs for about the eighth time this week <laughs> um i think somebody is not watching the podcast anymore uh, because they said all my songs have been sung again um <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's a callback um, yeah no kidding and we said girl power at some point do you remember that Did it have to do with our band that we talked about? No idea. Favorite quote is, and I quote, girl power. Okay. I mean. I'm down. All, all for it. Yeah. Free power to the people. The um, Also, final final thought is somebody, uh, real, like their favorite thing of the week was Arthur and our visit with them. But yeah. When I was going through here and grading Mr. Arthur, I thought they misspelled your name horrendously. <laughs> this is like Arthur. Yeah, that's funny. So, that's that's our stuff from last week, Mr. Arthur. I think you have a little bit of a different show lined up for us today. I do, but before we get started, uh, you know, we just had El Patio, mm-hmm. and so I'm going to take a dessert break for just a minute. I want to thank Dr. Austin for giving us these little small desserts, <laughs> these erasers that she gave us. Isn't that something? Look, y'all, she gave us these little erasers. <laughs> Oh my looking God. like ice cream cones. Anyway, moving on. Mr. Arthur, right. did I tell you I got donuts? Yeah, you did tell me you got donuts. I'm kind of jelly about that. But you know, we have the best donuts here in town. Yeah. So I'm not even I'm not even mad. That's fair. Okay. So I told Mr. Riley before we started this that I was just wanting to do something, you know, that was just kind of different out there than we had done before. Um, and I wanted to discuss some ag facts. And so I looked up on Google, thank God for Google. I look up surprising ag facts and it came up with this whole list of things. Um, And a lot of these, Mr. Riley, have to do with like numbers. So, you know, you're probably not gonna get the right answer. I would definitely wouldn't have got the right answer. So uh, just humor me a little bit. Okay. How many farms do you think there are in the United States? So while you're thinking, you know, there's over, or I shouldn't say close to, but it's, it's somewhere in the neighborhood of like 380 million people. You know, we're getting close to the 400 mark, feeding a lot of people here in the U.S. So how many farms do you think that we have? Question. Okay. How many do we have in the state? I remember us talking well, about yeah, that. Yeah, I don't remember that number. I don't remember. Just ballpark based off of what you know. Um, I would guess, Mr. Riley, we probably in the state, and, and guys, don't quote this, look it up. It's probably like 2,500. Yeah, okay. That that was kind of what I was going for. Yeah. 
All right, so if we're at 2,500, we're kind of small in land area. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm going to say, oh, Mr. Arthur, I'm going to say, hmm, I feel like I'm just going to sound dumb, but I'm going to say 180,000 farms. Okay, yeah. And I don't, I don't think that sounds dumb at all. Um, actually, it's 2.1 million. Oh, my God. Um, but, you know, you have to think about how the size differs in farms, right? And to me, Mr. Riley, it is absolutely amazing that even 2.1 million farms can feed the 400 million people because um, you think about it, we have 400 million people that live in the country, but that's not counting those who are visiting, you know, right. traveling through that we're still having to feed. So right. that's a pretty amazing figure. Yeah. Um, I have four little sub bullets to that that I thought were interesting facts about that number of farms. 99% of those farms are family owned. Yeah. I mean, that to me, it's just, that's crazy. Mm -hmm. The average American farm is 435 acres. Um, I would have thought bigger. Um, yeah. There are 914 million acres of land dedicated to farming in the U.S. And farm and ranch families make up 2% of the population. So that shows, you know, how far we've got with technology, um, right. you know, and, and the manpower that we need to run a farm does, is not exactly what it used to be. Right. So um, a lot of things to learn from that. And that was kind of the point of this, but 2.1 million farms in the U.S. So that's crazy, Mr. Arthur. Yeah, it's nuts. The, uh, now, would you consider, would y'all be in that number there at Arthur Farms? I think... These are farms that are selling directly to the food supply, if I right. had to guess. Um, so I'm not sure. I, I would say no. Okay. So really, there's even more farms. Yeah. yeah. That's so. That's what I was kind of getting at, you know, because um, I mean. And maybe that number is based off of a, a tax thing, I, you know, where the, that's uh, a, that, so that I, I'm not sure. I'm not right. sure. Um, but going off of that question, Mr. Riley, what state do you think has the most farms? California. That's what I said. Mm -hmm. it's Texas. Well, definitely would have been in my top three. Um, probably, yeah. The sure. more surprising number to me or, uh, was that Missouri's number two. Really? Yeah. And I don't have a number for Missouri, but Texas has 248,000 farms. That's nuts. Yeah, it, that, that's absolutely mind-boggling. Mr. Arthur, had, they had more than my guess. Huh? There was more farms in Texas than my yeah. guess. Yeah, that's over 10% mm -hmm. in Texas. So, wow. Um, the last thing I had, Mr. Riley, mm -hmm. do you know what state has the most jobs relating to agriculture per capita? Per capita? Oh, when you throw per in. Okay. I'm this one shocked me. This one shocked me big time. Shocked you big time? Not, not that I, I did. It, I just didn't think about it. It's one of those states that, you know, it, definitely it, an ag state. Mm -hmm. um, but when I was thinking, I was thinking about the big timers like Texas, California kind of thing. Well, well, but you throw per capita in. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, they have a lot of uh, non farmers for sure. Mr. Arthur, would you consider this a flyover state? Like mid America? Kind yeah. Of? Mm -hmm. Nebraska. It is Nebraska. Um, one in four jobs relate to agriculture in Nebraska. That is crazy. 25% of jobs. So, okay. you know, we, we teach until we're blue in the face about, um, you know, the impact that the agriculture industry has. Yeah. And I think this number could be skewed. Um, I do remember seeing a figure one time, this is one in 12 jobs in America relate to ag. That feels right. Um, you know, and so knowing that one in four in Nebraska do, I mean, that's just, to me, it's mind blowing. Right. It's somewhere around that eight to 10%, you know, yeah. relate to agriculture. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Mr. Arthur, um, 
Mm. When, mm. how did how did you decide on those facts? Did you just like Google? What what'd you Google? I just did surprising ag facts. Um, and the, the website that I went to had a ton of stuff like state specific stuff. Mm -hmm. So like the one for Louisiana was that uh, the Tabasco pepper is only grown in Louisiana, you know, that kind of stuff. And okay. this gave some numbers and I thought numbers would be better. Just right. to throw some stuff out there, but. You know, when people say things like a Tabasco pepper is only grown in Louisiana, it, I kind of hate when I see facts like that just because I already know it. Yeah, but it's also not true because it's only commercially grown in Louisiana. You know, it can be well, grown in there. You know, and that's how most of those facts go. It's really hard for an absolute fact like that. It's really yeah, hard yeah. To, to just generalize and say, this has never been done before. Mm -hmm. um, I, I heard a fact later, uh, I don't remember if me and you were talking about it, but it's one of those things where no one had ever done it. And then they're like, oh, well, this other person did it. I don't yeah, know yeah. what I'm, uh, but it's almost like that uh, light bulb. You remember the oh, light yeah. bulb, Mr. Arthur? I remember the light bulb. You want to tell them about the light bulb? So when I was a kid, my family took vacations to the Fort Worth, Dallas area all the time. Because what is it, Mr. Riley? I, I shouldn't even ask you this because I should know. It's like three and a half hours from, Yeah. you know, I grew up right on the state line. So it's not very far. And we'd go over there to the stockyards and, uh, if you don't know about that, look it up. But it's where they would bring cattle in because at one time Fort Worth was a pretty rural area. They bring them into, the, yeah, they kind of cattle drive them into the what we now know as the DFW uh, met, metropolis. But um, so we would go over there a lot, and there was this light bulb in a museum, and I don't remember the name of the light bulb. Doesn't matter. But my mother bought me a shirt that was like. What I remembered it saying was the world's longest burning light bulb uh, and had a picture of this ugly Thomas Edison looking light bulb on it. And uh, I'm not sure if Mr. Riley's laughing or tired of hearing the story, but um, I said something about it one day and I'm not even sure how it came up. I don't, I don't know. But Mr. Riley was like, no, it's in California. And I was like, no, dude, like I had a shirt that had this on it. And turns out mine was the second <laughs> longest burning light bulb but the the catch was the one in california was the longest burning but mine was the longest consecutive burning <laughs> so you know it's it's whatever but those facts like that can be kind of misleading i guess yeah when you look up the one in california it's like in the year 1912 it was cold and it went off for seven seconds or something <laughs> like that like they cared and like whatever yeah my favorite part of that retelling of the story because i think that's the third time i've heard the story now yeah I think my favorite part in this version is you said i can't remember what the name of the light bulb is and the fact that somebody has a name for a light bulb is yeah. ridiculous the one in california i think has a more proper name but it's whatever a proper name it has like people's last names i think they named it after somebody the anyway. person that the person that actually put it in yeah, that's probably true. <laughs> that's probably true. Um, but anyway, the, the whole point of doing the facts thing was just, you know, to impart some knowledge. Uh, our students have been studying one specific area for the last several weeks, you know. And so um, in case they forgot that, you know, how big agriculture is, there you go. We just talked about it. Um, one thing I, I didn't put on there because I didn't know how much time we'd have, but now we're talking. Um, one of the cool facts was that Alaska – is responsible for 60% of uh, domestic seafood. Hmm. And I thought that was weird because, and, and that's probably like a poundage thing. Because right. can't you see like tuna and stuff being caught up there? But like, you know, Louisiana is responsible for a lot of seafood. Maine is responsible for a lot of seafood. But, um, you know, knowing that Alaska is 60% of total, I think that's pretty cool. It's probably, like you said, by weight because uh, they, they supply us all that cod right goes into the, the you know fillet of fishes and all that kind of stuff yeah so uh maine and louisiana have the good seafood yeah definitely um uh, mr arthur catfish seafood or not no well look no. It, but what would you call it though see to me any freshwater fish is just fish I don't think it's fair to call it seafood. Um, well, what kind of restaurant would you go to eat it?
I mean, I guess in the South we call it Coke or Coke, so we call it a seafood restaurant. But, um, you know, I don't know. Because I think about, like, most seafood restaurants serve seafood and domestic right. fish, you know. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I guess it's not anything to be picky about, but I am kind of excited that uh, it's finally Lenten season and I can – eat a filet of fish with purpose. I don't know, it feels like it feels wrong to eat it when it's not Lenten season. So I'm definitely gonna hit up McDonald's tomorrow for a filet of fish. <laughs> uh, you know, as we segue out of this, Mr. Arthur, I've never had a filet of fish. Well, don't get it with cheese because cheese and fish don't go together. You say that and I feel like I've had like Cajun dishes with seafood and cheese. Oh, they definitely do it. I, I, I can't stand it. Um, but well, every time you say that, I can't remember the one I like. But there's one that, and it might just be like a like a creamy cheese sauce kind of thing. Yeah, definitely over pasta, it makes a little bit of a difference. Right. Yeah. All right, Mr. Arthur. We talked a whole lot about a whole little. Well, I thought I thought that was interesting, and like, well, it we definitely. Said, uh, you know, we didn't get a real week. And yeah. they didn't want to hear about us uh, running errands and, and taking care of business on Monday and Tuesday. They didn't want to hear that. Guys, for those of you that are listening, Mr. Riley and I were talking about what we were going to talk about um, this afternoon in our softball game. And I, he said, uh, I said, you know, I really don't have a lot on the week. I, I said that. And then he said, well, we could tell them about, you know, when they, y'all weren't here. And I was like, Mr. Riley, what did we do when they weren't here? I, I don't even remember. That was two days ago, and I don't know, so it's whatever. Live for the moment. Live for the moment. You got a game? I got a game, Mr. Arthur. It's, uh, I got two questions. Okay. Um, Mr. Arthur, this week, Counting Crows, have you ever? I mean, when I was little, I'd go outside. I don't know if I counted them. <laughs> but, uh, no. That's everyone would make us shoot them, and he thought – yeah, I'm, I grew up in the, the country, the country. And oh. Kevin Hall would make a set out on the front porch when he was tired of watching us with a 22 and um, me and my brother, and we would shoot crows. So he could hang them up in his garden to scare off other crows. Because he thought if a crow saw a dead crow, they'd fly away. I'm not sure a crow's that smart, but uh, I don't remember ever counting them. You know what I'm saying? So the the band name came from uh, yeah I, I don't even know what to do with that Mr. Arthur it's so sad. <laughs> hey kids get out of my hair go shoot a bird. The moral of the story is spend time with your pet while he's still here. And well preach that, that's good stuff. So oh, there you go. But uh, the name came from a uh, British nursery rhyme. Okay. Um, about the superstitious counting of magpies because apparently one magpie is supposed to be like sorrowful kind of thing. And they the the nursery run counted crows and it told you what a certain number meant. Oh, okay. So one is for sorrow, two is for joy, and it, it went on whatever. That that's irrelevant. Uh yeah, can I get you on a tangent real quick? Yeah. What do you call a, a group of crows? They have a funny name. A murder. A murder. There it is. Yeah. Yeah. So the uh, Counting Crows, okay. an American rock band, they were formed in 1991. Uh, the band consists of several men. Uh, it's kind of led by Adam Duritz. He's the uh, lead vocals, but it was a total of uh, about seven guys that got together. My favorite name is one of the guitarists is David Emmergluck. Um, David Emmergluck? Gluck. Gluck. Yeah. I'm not sure, but I want to know everything about that last name. That's awesome. That's um, got to be like Swedish or something, huh? It does. It sounds like that. I don't know uh, where it came from. I'm going to look yeah. up uh, etymology later. But anyway, I want to know what state they were formed in. They were formed in a, a western state. I want to know which one. Do you want to have a blind guess? Yeah, I do. But I, I you know, I've been thinking. I figured that's the question you're going to ask. Yeah. Um, and you said it was an English nursery rhyme. So I was thinking they were from New England. Um, 
So, yeah, that's kind of a bust. Um, Western State, Wild Guess, Washington. That's a good guess. Um, you would probably think that they had crows and such, but they and, and they probably do. But yeah, it's not Washington. Okay. So uh, your first hint is the name of this state comes from a 16th century Spanish novel that describes a mythical paradise that was called this name. Mm. Any guess from that? Any Western states you think mean paradise in Spanish? Or could be named like a, a Spanish paradise? Do you want a second hint? Well, first thing I thought was Nevada. Mm. But that, that don't sound Spanish. Oh. So. Yeah, it, it, it might be. I don't know. Uh, that's not the answer to this. It isn't. You got another hint? Yeah, I have another oh, hint. Okay. I've been trying to do these where uh, the first hint is really off the wall and interesting, and the second one should just kind of give it away. Yeah. And so the second hint is this state is the top U.S. producer of lemons, apricots, avocados, dates, figs, grapes, kiwis, nectarines, peaches, raspberries, strawberries, and other fruits. California. Yep. So uh, they were from the Berkeley area. Okay. I thought about giving you UC Berkeley trivia, but I didn't know how you'd be on. Uh, wait, is is it UC Berkeley? Is that the Bears? UC Berkeley is Cal. Yeah, that's Cal. Okay, that's what that's what I thought. Um, Bears. They took the greatest coach in Louisiana Tech history, football. Anyway. Really, Sonny Dykes. A sad away. place to go. If you had to go anywhere in the Pac-12, that'd be the end of my list. Well, you know, they've had a history, man. They they gave us Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, I guess. And they gave us that. Do you remember seeing that play that they used to put on all those compilations where the guy runs into the band? Oh, yeah. That was at the Cal Stanford game. Stanford, yeah. I remember that. All right, so one final question, Mr. Arthur. So, uh, This band, Counting Crows, they received a 2004 Academy Award nomination for their single, Accidentally in Love, which was included in which animated film? It was included in which animated film? Okay. 2004 animated film, Accidentally in Love. 2004 yep. animated film. So I can guess and then you'll give me another hint? Yep. Okay. Um, animated film in 2004. Um, I'm struggling. Was it a Disney film? It was not. I don't know. Give me a hint. This, this was kind of an answer to Pixar kind of thing. Okay. Uh, it's their real biggest rival, at least in the 2000s it was. Um, its subplot involved a donkey who was married to a dragon. Have I seen this? I I hope, Mr. Arthur, but you did have an odd childhood. I don't I don't know. Um, donkey that's married to a dragon. Yep. I'll give you a, a, a second hint if you want it. The only movie I know of with a donkey is Shrek. Is that your guess? I mean, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> well, Mr. Arthur, I'll give you credit on that one. It's Shrek, too. Um, I always thought that was Disney. DreamWorks. DreamWorks. Oh, yeah. yeah. Are they still a thing? No. Yeah. Yeah, donkey. <laughs> All right, Mr. Arthur, that was the quiz. I had no idea he was married to a dragon. That's that's what happens in number two. He gets married. He There's a good chance I haven't seen number two. Part of that spell kind of thing made him into a dragon with her. And then at the end of... I don't remember how all this happens, but, you know, Fiona became an ogre forever. An ogre. You remember... Yeah. That's a really good Mike Myers, by the way. Anyway, the uh, 
donkey becomes a dragon for part of it and then at the end becomes a donkey once again yeah okay but that dragon was in love with donkey oh my gosh accidentally in love oh i did it you did it you did it did it again You've been trying to set that up all week, your man. Oh my gosh! I bet you planned that. You, yeah. you wanted me to do this. You uh, what? Oh, I mean, what was that for? I'm ready for you to do a band that I know. Well, I do the bands you know, and I don't know. I okay. You you want that next week? Yeah. Okay, a band you know. You want to call your shot? You want to, or you want me to just work with what I know? Yeah, just work with what you know. Okay. All right, I'm gonna uh, go through a playlist that I think you'll like, and then I'm gonna find a band, and uh, I'll go from there. All right. Okay. Mr. Arthur, do you have any parting words for our children? I hope they're as ready for next week as we are. Yeah, we didn't even talk about news. I didn't even think about that. It's fine, they heard it all week. It's fine. I mean, we act like they listen uh, to this. Yeah. Um. I'm really proud because I said a couple of stupid things at the end of one of these episodes, and that was a couple of people's favorite quotes. Um, so kudos to them for listening the whole way, or at least scanning the whole transcript to get the answers. There you go. All right, Mr. Arthur, if you could give them one final piece of advice, what would it be? Mm. Advice? You said? Advice, yeah. One thing that like they could just really carry them through the weekend, have a good weekend with it. Okay. If your feet are cold, wear socks. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, and I'm going to say that the best time machine you can get is to watch TikTok because it will just become midnight. Just like. Uh, All right, man. Mr. Arthur, I think it's been a great week, a short week, <laughs> long week. Long week, short week, going into contest week. Guys, we out.